So let's go through how you create a loopback interface on a Cisco router. Now there's a couple of reasons you'd want to go ahead and create a loopback interface. Uh, first off, define it. A loopback interface is a software-only interface. It doesn't actually exist in hardware. So it's a software-only interface and it never goes down. So they used to be used quite a bit for router identifications, for routing protocols and things like that, because it was an interface that never went down. And st they're still occasionally used for that. They're also used for testing, because I can create a loopback interface on a router, and then I can try to ping that loopback interface, and that will tell me if my router is up, even if another interface on it might be down. I can also advertise loopback interfaces to verify that my routing is working. So that's a common use for it. So I'm using the same um, the same router that we used for a previous video. There's some IPv6 stuff configured on it. That's about it. That's not going to get in our way. So we're going to go to privileged exec mode. And uh, let's go and do a show run. And we'll just look at some of our interfaces here. So I have interface G00, G01, and there you can see some stuff that we did before. G02, a VLAN, and that's all of my interfaces. I don't have any loopback interfaces. So what I have to do is I have to define one and then configure it. So I'm going to issue the command config t, and I'm going to create a loopback interface, and I'm going to call it loopback0. So my command is just interface loopback0. Or if you're being lazy, you can call it lo0. So interface loopback0 change state to up, line protocol change state to up. Now remember, it's not actually connected to anything because it doesn't exist, but it's an always up interface. Well, now that I have my interface, I can set an IP address on it. Once you have your interface, by the way, you configure it just like you would any other interface. So, uh, so I'm going to go to, whoops, not interface, IP add 172.16.31.1 with a subnet mask. And we'll set a description. Loop back interface for testing. And that's it. I don't have to issue the no shutdown command because it's automatically up. Every When you create it, it immediately comes up. And it will never go down because you can never unplug anything from it. Now you can do a no shutdown command or a shutdown command and turn it off if you want to. But there's nothing that's going to cause it to go down other than an administrator. So let's create another one. Let's do interface loopback1. And for that one, we're going to set an IP address of 172.16.30.1. And we'll set a description of second loopback interface. All right. So I'm going to exit all the way out, and I'm going to do a show run. And when we get to our interfaces section right up here, you'll see our two loopback interfaces that we just created. Now, like I said, they're going to function just like every other interface. So if I do a show IP interface brief, we'll see our two loopback interfaces, their IP addresses. Get it highlighted here. The fact that they're both configured as up and up. And if I do a show IP route, I'm going to see that those are also in my routing table. So there we go. We have now configured and verified loopback interfaces on, an I on a Cisco router. Now I configured them with IPv4 addresses. You can configure them with IPv6 addresses as well. They work just like a regular interface.